Hi and welcome to another episode of Reaper TV. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how we can use Ripple editing in Reaper. We're going to look at the three modes, we're going to look at how we can use it and how it can speed up the entire process of editing, mixing and rearranging any track or audio that you're working with. So let's take a look at all that right now. So for this demonstration, I've got a typical project open. I've got a couple of different parts on there and we've got a couple of different regions set up. Now, whenever we want to work with Ripple Mode, we've got three different ways we can work with it. We can work with it switched off, we can work with it on a track by track basis, or we can work with it across all tracks. So let's take a look at with it switched off to start off with. So if we've got a piece of audio in any track and we click and drag on it, you'll see all that happens is once we let go, it'll reposition itself wherever we leave it leaving the gap and everything else in between. So this is the way that you're probably used to working with Reaper and this is how it works by default. Now we've got a couple of different ways we can change the modes over between all the different options available to us. First of all, if we come over to the toolbar, we have an option on there. You can see we've got Ripple Editing currently disabled with the keyboard shortcut, which is the default of Alt or Option and P. We can then switch that over to Single Track Ripple Editing or we can click it a second time and we can go to Ripple Editing for all tracks. Or we can click again to switch it back to its default of editing no tracks. So if we switch it over to Ripple per track, we can now start working with this in a slightly different way. You'll see that I can still move this over in exactly the same way that I would. But let's just say, for example, that I take this section and I delete it. Once I do that, it'll close the gap up on that particular track and compensate for the piece of audio that we've just removed. So let's just undo that. I can also use this if I copy this and then I click to add it in, you'll see that what happens is that new piece of audio will push anything to the right over. So once I paste that in, you can see everything to the right moves over to allow that to drop in there. Whereas previously, if we had this disabled, and we pasted that piece of audio in, that will literally just go over the top of whatever is in that section. So that will now overlap and overwrite the existing piece of audio. So by using this method, you could very quickly and easily be able to comp a song in various different pieces. So you could take the entire chorus section, for example, and you could just drop that in where you wanted. So you can adjust the length of the entire song without having to go to the effort of moving everything over. So that's a really cool way of working. So that's ripple editing per track. That's the basics of it. Now we can switch this over again to the second option, which is ripple edit all tracks. So now let's take a look at how that works. If we come over to this block of audio, you can see I can select that. And now if I drag this over, you'll see everything else that is split at that point will move over with it. So now we can easily make space for any other element that we want. You'll notice that the sections that actually proceed, or in other words, go further back than the piece of audio that we're working with, don't move. So we can see with this solo part and with the bass, they don't move. Now, if you want to actually move all of the audio over, there's an easier way of achieving that. You can simply make sure that your cursor is on the bar that you want to work with on any empty track and press the S key and that'll then split everything at that point. However, if you don't want to do that on every single track, you can do it on a track by track basis by simply clicking on the track, or you can click the track and hold the control or command key down to select multiple tracks. Once you've done that, make sure your playhead is in the right position and press S. So that's a good way of being able to quickly and easily be able to choose the tracks you want or to select all of them. So the splits in place. Now, if we come back to the piece of audio and drag, you'll see now that everything starts to move over. So that's very quick and very easy. The other thing as well is, let's just say, for example, we take this little block of audio and we copy that, then position the playhead where we want to insert that. Now, if I insert that and paste it in there, you'll see all of the tracks move over to the right hand side, not just the track that we're working with. So again, it's a very quick and easy way of being able to make sure that anything you copy and paste into different sections of your audio, the space is opened up so you can quickly copy and paste other elements in there. You may only want to add some space in for some reason, but it's a very quick and very easy way of doing it. So that's how easy it is to do that. So let's just undo that. Now we can also use this with time selections. So let's just say, for example, that we want the intro solo. If I double click on this marker, 
That now creates a time selection of that region itself. And now if we come down to any of the pieces of audio and delete those, you'll see the entire section, including all the region, will be removed. So it's a very quick and easy way of being able to take out a big chunk of your song. So that pretty much wraps up the basics of working with Ripple editing in Reaper. Hopefully you found this video useful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button to be kept up to date with all the new content added every single week. If you have any comments, questions or feedback on this video or anything else covered on the channel, please pop those in the comments section below. And until next time, happy mixing.